So process substitution allows you to refer to a process's input or output as a file name. Let's see how this works. Let's start by printing out our current process ID. This is the process ID for our current instance of bash. Now let's wrap our previous statement in some parentheses. Notice that the process ID is now different from our previous process ID. And if we run it again, it's still different. This is because our commands are being run in a new subshell. We can confirm this by using the bash underscore subshell variable. Any number other than zero indicates that we are indeed in a subshell. The number returned by this variable indicates the level of subshell that we're in. So if we echo this variable from our current shell, we get zero indicating that we are not in a subshell. And if we surround this command line with parentheses, we will get a one, indicating that this command line is being run in a subshell at a depth of one. If we nest this same command, we'll get a one for our first command and we'll get a two for our second nested command. So we can see that our nested command is running in a subshell at a layer depth of two. So a subshell within another subshell. So we haven't yet actually performed any process substitution. For that, we need one more component, which is either a greater than or a less than sign added before the left paren with no space in between. So let's do that. Let's use echo first, followed by our process substitution. So we will start with the less than sign and echo the bash process ID variable within our subshell. So we've just echoed out a file path. And as you're probably aware, echo doesn't read files. So we're going to have to use something else to read this file. So let's use cat instead. And now we have our process ID printed. So when using process substitution, just remember that you need to treat it as a file. So let's do one more example reading from our process substitution. So let's create a couple of directories and populate them with some files. So let's use process substitution and print the listings of these directories side by side. We can use PR to do this, but we need to give PR some files as input. So as LS doesn't produce files, this is a situation where process substitution can be handy. We can even work out the differences, if any, between two file listings using diff. So far, we've been reading from our process substitutions, so let's do some writing to them. As we need to treat process substitution in the same way that we treat files, in order to write to them, we need to either redirect to them or provide them as an argument to another command that is capable of writing to files. So as a toy example, let's use echo to write to our process substitution and create a hash of the input, which we will then write to a file. So we now have a new file that contains an MD5 hash of the word hello that was redirected into our process substitution. If we look at the contents of the hash file, the end of the line has a dash where the file name would usually be. This indicates that the file was actually standard in of the subshell. If we do another hash of the file itself, but this time provide the file name as an argument, you'll see the difference. We actually have a file name, so let's replicate what happened when we used process substitution. So you can see that the hashes are both identical and both file names are dashes. So to summarize, you can send data into a process substitution using greater than and read with less than. There should not be any space in between the sign and the left paren. And you can use process substitution as a drop in replacement, any place where you could use a file name, such as when using T or redirection due to a file name being presented by process substitution. So I hope you found this useful and thanks for watching.